<laughs> Spikes, baby! <laughs> I didn't just restart because I made a real dumb, stupid decision or er, mistake. <laughs> anyway, wholesome. <laughs> wholesome! Okay. I love this entire thing. I love your. I love the misdirection with the tomatoes thinking it's a fucking like i thought it was she had like a head in a bag um but what do you want to talk about first david i'm gonna let you take the lead because clearly i'm aw uh, drunk stay out of my liquor cabinet damn it hey. uh no but like this just the desire to preserve this family is so fucking adorable regardless of if it's a farce or not there's clearly something there the more they stay together it's less and, and less farce every day yeah, it really is. Like, they're falling in love. They're really just growing this family unit here at, the more this mission progresses. And just the, the fucking – the bitches at her work, I want to smack – clear across like no do not try to cause a fucking divorce let this be pure and wholesome god damn it a lot of them are amazing so uh, oh excuse me a lot of them are bitches there's one that, uh, line here that i like um and i, I want i do want to read that um where she kind of looks at your and says you seem different lately you always used to have this dumb blank face like you were a robot or something uh and she says is it because i got married and then you know the dense blonde here is like no i thought you had like new makeup or something but like <laughs> What's interesting is this is what I'm liking because it, it's, it's giving me that Kilo vibe. And I do love – this is like my fucking character kink apparently. I love those people that are like – they've gone numb to their life and they find something to like unnumb them. And um, with her, it's like she literally originally – and we saw her in the beginning. She was kind of like a robot at her job. She just existed there yes. to, to you know put on a facade and then she did her actual job, which was assassin work you know um and and it started off as like oh well, this is just a cover but like all of a sudden she's noticing without even 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 her realizing and a lot of times this does happen where like if you're around someone who's like not toxic and they they're actually so like a friend who pushes you up and and uh helps you improve sometimes you won't even realize that you're improving you'll improve without even realizing it and like what's happening with her is she's great she's gaining desires and wants she's she's getting the desire to improve as a person to learn new skills to increase her life to something beyond just killing you know i want to learn how to cook because i have people i want to make happy um i want to be a good mother to this child i want to experience you know i, I maybe she's gonna i want to go on vacation with this guy i want to see new things because she definitely is someone and i'm very curious this whole chapter made me think like eventually we have to see the flashback as like as to like how she became an assassin right right like my god and the reason i bring that up and i promise i'll give you i just have a rant to go through the reason i bring up her flashback potential flashback is because like clearly something got her to this point in life where she feels very just like i don't know broken empty this is this is my whole life is this assassination thing right and this whole relationship is kind of bringing her back to some sense of normalcy like oh i remember now the joys of life and like all these different things that life can be um even like because because she didn't she gave the vibe of someone who had no friends like she she had her brother but that's an obsessive thing but like no one at work right. liked her no one else liked her this is like her remembering how friendship is and if she's ever even had it period so yeah. Yeah. And like, and just to ca to to cap that out, the the final line here, which really got me, I thought I was just doing this to protect my contract killing job, but hearing their praise, seeing them smile like that, I never imagined it would make me feel this happy. And I love it. I just love that. It, there's not even much more I can say other than that's great. Go ahead, David. Yeah, like everything in this chapter is what I love in this series. Like the desire to protect this facade of a family, you know, continue this contract continue everything that we're down this path of here right but what is so fucking pure here is going back to and you call it obsessive but i, I actually find this adorable like this beautiful like trip to the past like what did your mother make what did what kind of food did you eat before what did i say about obsessive i'll get to it in a second like oh, okay. Like, this dish that they made, this stew that they made, that their mother made. But her brother just eating everything and saying it's good, it's good, it's good, just to try and see her happy. No. But then you get the, then you get the very, very dark side of this, like, 
their palate is so warped because they've uh, been so dependent on each other for yeah. so goddamn long. Like, that is something that can actually fucking happen. Like, you're so used to this one thing over and over again. No matter how bad it is, it to you it's good mm-hmm. because you're so fucking used to it. You're so used to being broke or so used to being in this state of not being able to experience anything else and you want to see that smile that that little bit of joy in this fucked up side of your life where you're depending on a sister that's never really been taught how to cook taught how to do these things taught how to raise a fucking family taught how to do anything like you can't really be taught how to raise a family right so you make a good point there right and that is some good at subverting of expectations because obviously when we see the brother show up it's one of those like oh god this guy and and don't even deny we both agree that oh god oh god this guy (laughs) um (laughs) and like i love there's a line here i have to find where um because like they keep going back and forth where you know uh why on earth would anyone marry you how dare she speak to my sister that way should i make her disappear (laughs) The best part, too, is that's not even just, like, I'll kill her in the back. You know that would be, like, he probably has some boys at the government that's, like, listen, I got I got word that she's a fucking terrorist. <laughs> Make her disappear. Uh, uh, dump her in a black site. Oh, shit. But then the, the fucking, the back and forth where it's, like, she's, like, actually saying, like, fuck your husband, divorce him. And then she, and he's, like, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe she's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but my absolute favorite, and I hope I can find it. Uh, it's when he finds out that, yeah, yeah, it's when he finds out that she's, all this cooking is, is for Lloyd, and, and, like, even in his head, he's still like, calling him Loy Loy, he's like, a way to ruin this, Loy Loy. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's just a lot of funny moments to talk about here. Oh, my uh, God. Go ahead. <coughs> uh, I'm just coughing there. Oh, okay. Uh, we also have her fucking, um just the blood on the potatoes was I was like Jesus and she calls I it like, a weapon <laughs> I uh, she can't turn off that mode of like you ever get so programmed to where you have like a mode that you like you go into it at work usually right mm. like oh well I gotta unload this truck or yeah. oh I gotta send out these 5,000 packages or I gotta produce 10,000 units today you just go into that autopilot mode where everything is just tunnel vision Mm. yeah and i hope that i hope they go into that more actually i'd love to see the psychology of her trying to break out of that and in like less of a comedic tone and more of like a darker tone later on oh yeah definitely like it would be it would be beautiful to see her psychologically broken down so we go through this like this is what i do on a daily basis this is my fucking trip this is me going into just I'm playing Beethoven Symphony here right. as I go on a murder spree. Yeah, because we've seen um we've seen Lloyd's kind of daily routine. I'd love to see right. hers. And we kind of seen Anya's daily routine, you know, <laughs> cheating on her exam. Wake she... up, <laughs> play with Doggo, watch Spy <laughs> Cartoon. I don't know. Bond eat chicken nuggies. <laughs> eat chicken nuggies and drink chalky milk. No <laughs> chalky milk and chicken nuggy. Okay, but. Also, another again, I'm gonna know. I'm realizing now that a lot of this series is gonna be. I'll deeply analyze if I can, but a lot of it's just gonna be pointing out a joke and laughing at it. <laughs> um, loving the fact that because I'm just trying to fathom this. She's cutting the meat so finely that it's like wisps of hair, and they're blowing away in the wind, in like the air in the room, like dust particle meat. That's I, insanity. I love it. Like, <laughs> I love it. Like, it's like how accurate she is with a knife. She's like, I'll replace her chopping more, too. I'm into it. <laughs> like, this is who you want if you ever have to commit a crime. <laughs> uh, yes. I, I could, she, she could cut out all of your organs and then, like, re-stitch you up like you, and make you look like you're, you've never been touched. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know how his organs disappeared. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know, officer. He's just sitting there one moment, and then the and next then minute, all he just his collapsed. were gone. <laughs> and it's either Invader Zim or Yor. I don't know. <laughs> also, and then I think, too, I'm just now noticing this. Page 12, there's a kind of a foreshadowing. Because at the end, she talks about how, oh, I thought I was just doing this to protect my, my job. But even here at page 12, she says, please, I'm begging you, if Lloyd and I were to get divorced, I, I, and at first I thought she was just cutting herself off to not reveal the, oh, I need this for my job, but now I'm thinking it really is like a, 
I'd be sad. That'd make me upset. I would, I'd, I'd really, really be broken from that, you know, because I love him. Yeah, like, you can tell that there's some chemistry there the more they, they go along with the series. It's this beautiful, like, the more you're close to somebody, even if you're not really in this deep, deep relationship, like, you can become attached to somebody. It's... You know, part Stockholm Syndrome, part... Yeah, one of the reasons why, like, a lot of, like, old-school Christians adhere to this... There's this rule um, where, like, oh, you, you don't live with another person under the same household unless you're married to them or something. Because, I mean, it's it's pretty... If you're living with a person you're attracted to and you're like, no, no, it's not gonna be a relationship, I give it fucking three months, you'll be fucking. Sorry. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, like... I love too that like uh, her brother here. After she says the oh, I you know if I if we were gonna to get divorced, he even reacts like in a way like I think he's even starting to realize like wow, my sister really loves him. Like maybe I'm maybe I'm. I think, you know, again, maybe he's still a cunt. psychopath. Like, that's that's that ain't going away anytime soon. But like he's definitely like looking at her like oh shit, like she really has feelings for him. You know. Maybe I shouldn't disappear him. Yeah. <laughs> um. Also, again, I'm a big fan of him literally projectile vomiting while sit- we're talking about how good it is. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's it's fucked up, but it's beautiful in its own right. Like, I like your your breakdown of it, actually. You make a good point that it's not just comedy. It's not just his obsession with his sister, but, like, there is a genuine, like, he li- they only they only had each other and neither of them knew how to cook. That, there's a darkness to that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Red, you've never been poor, either. <laughs> I've never been poor. <laughs> Some of us have. I've never been Some poor, of... but I've lived in an apartment where I've, eat, I've only been able to eat frozen food for like a year. <laughs> yeah. Hey, frozen food has its place, and then <laughs> good, good food has its place too. How much should I work this month? Can I afford real food? <laughs> mm, yeah. But uh, the determination on her face too, like uh, bottom of page sixteen here, like it's just. It's right before she talks about how, like, wow, you look different, right? You're not that, like, emotionless robot. And, like, that that kind of line really hits me because I've been struggling with that lately. Uh, remember I sent, uh, you, like, I sent you, like, the – and it was, like, a – it was really – it was fucking, like, baby's first fanfic, obviously. But, like, I wrote a fucking fanfic in, like, an emotional distraught moment because I was like, fuck it, YOLO, why not? And it was uh, – it was about a time where I was, I mean, it wasn't starring me. I, I used a Kilo as a surrogate character through what I was feeling, but, um, it was about fucking feeling like a robot, feeling emotionless, feeling like mm-hmm. even when I talk to my friends, I'm like acting, I'm, I'm putting on a facade and I'm not, none of it's really genuine anymore. Like it was when I was a kid. And I love that line of like, for, for the first time, it doesn't feel like you're just pretending to be a normal person you're just actually being a person you're, you're, yeah. these are all genuine desires and, and emotions you're having they're not it's not you're not putting on a play here yeah definitely like i i mean i've talked at great lengths about my depression here on the channel and on my personal channel i've even dove into it more like we all have those moments of where we just turn into that robot and where we're acting like in your fanfic for example where you're kilo uh, I am not uh, Kilua. I was just like, cause it, it works. I was, I was it, talking. It, it, <laughs> Don't it make it sound cringy. It, it is cringy. No, it's a come on. Thing. <laughs> Listen, it was okay because it was all about how Kilua. He, he's like his whole life. He's been taught I'm to do trying nothing, to justify it. Nothing but fucking assassinating and shit. <laughs> And I was talking about how, like, he, he would be insecure with his friendship with Gon because he would feel like, is this really me or am I putting on a fucking facade like I've been taught to do with all of my victims? Because that's what his brother always told him. Like, you're not friends with Gon. You just don't know how to classify him yet. So you're fucking playing the long game. Like, it worked. Shut up. <laughs> it's so cringy. Hmm. Listen, though, is that a really good – is that a good fucking uh, lesson to teach people? Because, like, I was I, I was having a moment where I was sad, I was feeling down, and I, I took, oh, like, yeah. a YOLO. Like, you know what? Life's short. Why, why should I let, let me, what other people think stop me from doing something? So I did it. I'm just shitting on you because you're my friend. Oh, I know. <laughs> I just I, – I wanted to I wanted to put out that message because, honestly, that helped me in that moment. Just, it even it though, does help. Even just though it was cringe, general. it helped me to just say fuck it. it, it like, honestly, getting my emotions out on, like, a paper, it helped it a lot. It does. I, I used to, in high school, I used to write poetry. Yeah, 100%. I'm not kidding. And I wouldn't call it cringe. Now I need to read it. Maybe it's cringe when I read it. Yeah. 
<laughs> now you're going to analyze now the concept of, of poetry is not cringe but maybe yours is <laughs> oh god it was uh, I was fucking 15 of course uh, it was cringe. beautiful uh, but like that that mode exists that facade mode really really does exist where you, you are just going through the motions trying yep. to trying to just make it through the day for no real reason other than to make it to tomorrow. Yeah. And that that's been your up until this relationship that's just a cover. On on the surface is nothing more than a fucking cover for both of them. Which but, again is why I need to know why she's an assassin. Like clearly she has a talent for it and I'm I would assume she makes good money. You know what I mean? In fact, that's something we gotta we gotta deal with too. Twilight, obviously, he's this is he's doing this family thing as a facade, but he's gotta be fucking loaded. He's doing important work, unless he's literally like, I don't do it for money, I do it for good of my country, or in the world, maybe I don't know. But like, for God and country, the jobs these two are doing, they should be well off monetarily. Yeah, but remember, also in this this universe here, actually, good point. The country they're in does seem like a pretty shitty like boring on like some north korea shit like, like i mean th- not that bad because like the cities look fine and everything but like the government's pretty totalitarian like if you're not married they, they might come and fucking arrest you and <laughs> torture you and yeah. pull your ball hair out or so some shit. it's possible that like the mon it's maybe their economy is not the best who knows <laughs> their economy might not be the best the, but like that marriage aspect is beat into this country so like it, it's very very bizarre how this world works but it also makes perfect sense uh, yeah i get it <laughs> I, I, I we're over analyzing the fucking country itself here at this point no, that's that's the that i'm glad because the beginning of this video was boring as hell and i was like oh god we need to find something to review about this because if you're going to do a review you have to be able to over analyze everything that's the fun of it and we found yeah. it and now it's good and that proves me that this will work out <laughs> We'd make it work regardless, because I love this fucking series. Yeah. Um, but, like, go ahead. Here, here's the thing that I I don't get. Maybe you can walk me through it a bit more, being the more politically active of the two of us. Got it. So, this organization that fucking Lloyd works for, and therefore the, the counter-organization that yours brother works for, being completely at odds... How long do you think it's going to be before they discover each other's existence and this turns into well, a fucking total, so to clarify, total political shit show here? I th- between I, them? Now, here's the thing. I don't think that – now, If in, it's very possible I've misunderstood something, so if, if I'm wrong, then in the comments. But, like, I I think their organizations are a bit different. They're not, like, the perfect opposite of each other, whereas I, I'm pretty sure Lloyd's is not specific to <clears throat> this country. I think he – I assume he's like a spy that would be like, like I would just like kind of like our intelligence agency. I assume they would be sent to multiple, any country. You know what I mean? Like, Oh shit's going down in this country. Go there. She's going on this country. Go there. You know, I don't think he's bogged down to these two countries and keeping peace between these two. I imagine if I'm remembering correctly from like reading his intro, I think he's like a world renowned spy. That's probably done shit all around the globe. That's how I took it. Oh it's yeah. It's very you... possible that I just extrapolated that and created it out of nothing. If I'm wrong, let me know. Um, so I imagine his organization is I just remember like, the words world renowned. Yeah. So. I, I hopefully like it's very possible we made that. I don't know. Like I have you the comments have completely removed any confidence I have in remembering. That. So <laughs> genuinely I have no idea. Um, Thanks, Chainsaw Man comments. Oh yeah. Yeah. Especially this last Chainsaw Man chapter. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was a drug trip, wasn't it? Um, uh-huh. but uh whereas his um organization is like specifically this country's like CIA, FBI, and NSA, you know what I mean? Like, that's his country's, I don't know, deep state, I suppose, <laughs> you know? Um, like, I don't know how to put that. Like, like, I don't, there's a word for it, and I can't think of it. Like, because NSA, CIA, that's all too official sounding. Like, but, like, it's like some underground thing that's run by the government of this country that does, like, the dirty deeds, you know? Um... But are they done dirt cheap? Yeah, I'm glad that you thought I was going to make that reference too. <laughs> Daddy deeds. Dot, dot, cheap. See, I'm excited for when JoJo Part 7 finally gets animated so we have a clip of a Japanese man uh, horribly butchering the, that phrase. Daddy deeds. Dot, dot, cheap. 
<sighs> oh, God. And by the way, not racist because I can't speak Japanese, so it's equal. I would butcher their shit. They would butcher our shit. Um, now, let's see here. But, yeah, a uh, couple other scenes. Wait, no, I was on a tangent. So, your question was their, them finding each other. So, yeah, I think I think Twilight's agency is, like, more big. Whereas this is just, like, the the country. And they're, they're like, the anti-spy, you know what I mean? Especially considering... Uh, I, I consider these two countries as, like, an almost like a North Korea, South Korea, like, allegory, metaphor, whatever the fuck the word would be, um, where they have, like, a very thin veneer of peace that's constantly about to be challenged, and, like, you even see on the news, like, oh, peace talks, they're going better today, they're going worse this other day, like, it's, it's, a the two countries always at the fucking constant verge of potential war, and if they have nukes, nuclear war, um, nukes! Uh, yeah, so... That's how I see this, where, like, both countries, obviously, are, they've been fully Kool-Aid drank, and what, and if you don't know what the phrase Kool-Aid drinker means, it's someone who fully believes the lies and propaganda of their own country, you know, so, like, someone, like, if you're living, like, like, North Korea, they tell their own citizens, like, this is the best place to live ever, your leader, literally, like, he, he's never done anything wrong, he gets a perfect golf score every time, I believe at one point they literally told them that their leader didn't even shit, like, he doesn't shit, he doesn't have to, he's, he's above human, um, like that kind of shit. Like they just believe everything, and they, um, yeah, you know what I mean. So uh, like uh, that is uh, seriously. Uh, remember the the episode of Family Guy? One poop removal, <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah. how I see um Yuri. Uh, w- which I have to keep going back to his name because it sounds like a girl name. Um, it does. Well, you know, I I keep thinking of Doki Doki Literature Club. <laughs> uh, Yuri just is insane. Uh, that Yuri. But, uh, wait, we also have Yuri Lowenthal, who's a dude, who's a voice actor. So, yeah, it is a unisex name. Yeah, um, insert anime girl hanging herself here. But, uh, how are you not gonna laugh at that? <laughs> <laughs> Just like that! <laughs> Boom! Um, uh, but yeah, so Yuri, though, um, he, he's a Kool-Aid drinker, you know? He's someone who... He would be the guy that's like for for home for country for land, rah! you know, like like he is all in. If he, even though Twilight is literally trying to stop a war, he'd be like, yeah, like like he's the kind of guy that would want a war because he wants to wipe out the other country. Like ah, oh, fuck this peace shit. That other country's stepping over our country's the best. Like that's the vibe I get from him. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So that's kind of gonna be the ideolo- ideological difference between these two, um, if they ever do come in contact, which I'm sure they will, uh, under the um, circumstances of knowing who each other are. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm excited to see how that plays out. And then one last scene I wanted to talk about was, um, e- even her bitchy coworkers, this one has her moments where she's like, wait a minute, where are you from? Oh, well they would have put sour cream in it and that they helped them find the exact recipe. And so there's some wholesomeness there and we're seeing her relationship with Lloyd is helping her be better socially and making more friends. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They all still, I, I want your to just, Bitch slap all of them. Like, you are all horrible, horrible That would kind of blow her cover. <laughs> you are all horrible. Yeah, she'd probably decapitate them with one swift blow. <sighs> but they all deserve it. Remember like, when she punched humans. a moving car? <laughs> it was a car going, like, I assume, like, 20, 30 miles per hour, and she just punched it off the road. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that shit, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I always thought, like, she would have, like, realistic assassin strength. No, she could, like, legit be in, like, death battles. <laughs> I, I want to respect her for her. <laughs> oh, your versus. I don't know. <laughs> your versus. You know. <laughs> oh, dude. I want to. I want to see your go up against Kuro Sensei. <laughs> Jesus, leave her alone. She's already dead. <laughs> oh, gee. I mean, Kuro's fast, but like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's the speed. The speed is bad. The speed. Uh... The sheer bullshittery that fucking Koro has. The only reason that the students even killed Koro is because they just, like, you know, he liked them. And at the end, he was like, all right, either your government's going to kill me or you guys are. So, fuck it. <laughs> I'd rather my students kill me. Yeah. Okay, well, anyway, I loved this chapter. Good shit. We managed to squeak out 25 minutes. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Final thoughts for you, David. And predictions uh, going forward. <sighs> I mean, it's really hard to predict. It is kind of like a slice of life thing. So, like, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. I, like there's really no way to predict it. I hope the next, um, the next chapter is some Fun Anya fucking stuff. cummies, and let's go. I I want some Anya 
fuckery at the school, but I also really, really want doggo adventure. I want pure doggo adventure. I wouldn't mind if the next couple, like, like I don't know how they want to do it. They could do, they could like focus on one character. They could go back and forth. <laughs> I wouldn't mind like a three, four, uh, uh, your focus arc, uh, because I feel like we know a lot about Lloyd. We know a lot about Anya. We don't know as much about your. And, and I want to know about your, her assassin. Where does she get her orders? Like, w- w- you know, we know where Lloyd gets her order. Does she get orders or does, does she make her own decisions? Like, nah, fuck those guys. Uh, here, they need to be assassinated. Here, here's how it happens. Dead drops. Dead drops? <laughs> Dead drops. What are you talking about? They're little tiny hidden things throughout the fucking world. Like, okay, this is where y'all get your orders. It's behind this rock. Mm. And then she goes up and moves Dwayne the Rock Johnson out of the way. <laughs> I, I knew you'd go there. Not funny joke is not funny. I'm sorry. Um, Commit seppuku. <laughs> I ha- What's the best sword for that? Well, Okioras. Yeah, it would be. You know. So, <laughs> all right. Yeah, I would. I just. I want to see that. I want to see like your, you know, like similar to how Lloyd has been like, oh fuck, I gotta hold. On, I gotta run and take a shit for a day real quick. And that's that's actually a funny line too, because she's like, I need the cooking lessons. My husband had to take a shit for an entire day. <laughs> It's like, oh, you poor girl. It's not. That's not why. I. It, it's so funny. Like they're living this wonderful web of lies together, and, and yet that's they still be sad. Because like I don't want her to be like to realize, oh fuck. Like I, eventually, it's gonna be a while probably. Cause, <coughs> like, but like eventually, she will find out that he's been lying to her, and I hope that doesn't like make her think that the love isn't real. She probably will for a bit. You know. Yeah. Uh, it. it uh... It's going to be beautiful and sad all at the same time. Like, mm. because you take your grenade pin back, sir. <laughs> I can't take my grenade pin back. I already exploded the grenade. And probably five kids over there when I threw it. Nah. He's a, he's a feelings doctor. He would never do that. He's a feelings doctor. Also, like, there's so many things. It could be like... Um, Oh, Lloyd, it's take your kid to work day. Go take Anya to your therapist office. Oh, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, fuck. All right, Anya. Uh, uh, I'll be honest to you. Uh, Daddy doesn't actually have a job. (laughs) Daddy's a deadbeat. (laughs) Yeah, Daddy actually steals his money. (laughs) Easier to explain than being a spy. And then she would know he's lying, obviously, but it's like she has to come up with, like, some other explanation. Actually, you know what he'd probably do? He'd probably just get his fucking, like, agency to, like, set up a temporary, like, building. Right. Like, a fake therapist building. <laughs> you know they're capable of it. Yeah. We got the budget. Yeah. His agency alone spends more on this mission than our country spends on healthcare. <laughs> <laughs> Before anyone says blah blah blah, yeah, we spend more on healthcare, but it's all the, for corporate profits. I mean, like actual like good spending, like, like on like helping people. I'm so goddamn hard at that. What the fuck? Uh, thank you, thank you. That was one round. I knew it was gonna be good leading up. Well, anyway, peace. Peace. <laughs>